In this video, we learned the relationship between the Gibbs energy and work. Uh, in prior videos, we have seen the definition of the Gibbs energy and how it can be used as a criterion for spontaneity if we are working under conditions of constant pressure and constant temperature. Now, that is very useful uh, in and of itself, uh, but it turns out that uh, there's a, a second point where the Gibbs energy is useful, aside from predicting spontaneity and equilibrium, and that is the fact that the Gibbs energy is uh, related to work. Okay, so let's see how that happens. We're going to start by just writing the definition of the Gibbs energy, and then thinking about an infinitesimal change to a, 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 to a process, so or to the Gibbs energy, which means that this could be a chemical reaction or, or a phase transition, something like that. Okay, so the change in Gibbs energy for that process would be as follows, but if um, we now assume that uh, the process is taking, at constant, uh, is taking place at constant temperature, then uh, this parenthesis simply is reduced to the following. T differential of S. Again, and that happens if we assume that working under constant temperature. Now, uh, the next thing that we can do is just uh, uh, plug in here the definition of enthalpy, uh, which we learned when we were dealing with the first law. And the definition of enthalpy is just uh, the sum of the internal energy plus the product of the pressure and volume. Okay, so uh, the product of pressure and volume, and then minus T differential of S. And here we can uh, take a second approximation or assumption and that is that we're going to be working at constant pressure. And again, uh, so, so far we have two assumptions, constant temperature, constant pressure, but as we have seen when we introduced the uh, Gibbs energy, those are conditions that we normally work under, right? So, so if you're going to think about your bodies, for example, that is uh, all the chemistry that takes place there is at constant pressure and constant temperature. So, so this is not something very dramatic. Okay, so assuming a constant pressure there, then we can uh, say that this is just the change in the internal energy plus uh, P differential of V minus T differential of S. Okay, great. Uh, so now uh, uh, we can take this internal energy and apply the first law. And we're going to do so for a reversible process. In the end, it really actually, uh, what we're going to learn here uh, doesn't it will be independent of whether the process is reversible or not because it gives energy as a state function, so it's path independent. But, but just for the derivation, we're going to do some here a re reversible process. Right, so uh, what that means here is that that differential of U is just going to be the sum of heat and work, so we can write uh, differential of Q rev, and then here we have to write uh, the differential of work reversible. Uh, plus P differential of V minus T differential of S. Now, uh, we have to talk a little bit about the term for work that we're going to put in here. Everything that we have done until now with work uh, has been uh, focused on expansion work. Okay, so, so that was the case where you had a gas and maybe uh, that gas was pushing out a piston or you were compressing that gas. That is what is expansion work. But as it turns out, there's many more types of work. For example, my uh, simply holding this marker is uh, uh, hydrolyzing some uh, uh, ATP that uh, uh, you know is contracting my muscle, and uh, that is actually muscular work. Okay, so so that's a different type of work, but it's not expansion because there's no gases pushing any pistons inside my body as I contract my, uh, these muscles. Right? Uh, there's also electrical work, there's uh, magnetic work, there's uh, a variety of works that are not expansion. Okay, and again, those are useful. For example, the, every time that you charge the battery of your laptop or your cell phone, you are actually uh, doing uh, uh, electrical work. Okay? You're, you're harvesting work from uh, uh, the outlet and you're driving electrons in your battery to where they have to be. That is uh, electrical work. Okay, so, so uh, what we're going to do here is just separate these two types of work. On the one hand, we're going to have uh, expansion work, which is the one that we know how to handle so far in scores, and then the rest of work that is non-expansion, we're going to call it non-expansion work. Okay, and the way that we're going to write that is simply by saying uh, this is the reversible work expansion, and then I'm going to just have a second term here that is going to be uh, reversible work as well, but I'm going to use a prime 
to the node that is non-expansion work. Okay, so this will be your regular uh, expansion work, and again, now you're going to have a term that is just going to be uh, also reversible but non-expansion, and that is what we mean by that prime there. Again, that uh, 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 considers all the types of work, like mus uh, muscular work that you could do, or uh, electrical, magnetic, uh, all of those. Okay, plus the rest of the terms, plus P differential of V minus T differential of S. All right, great. Okay, so that is kind of the, the new definition. This is just the total work that you can uh, extract out of this process. All right, so uh, let's try to see if we can consolidate this expression uh, so that it's a little bit more compact. Okay, if this is expansion work, then we know that uh, we can write that as simply minus P external differential of V. Okay, but of course, because we are working under reversible conditions, the external pressure is identical to the internal pressure. Okay, you always have equilibrium throughout that gas expansion, and what that means is that this is equal to minus P differential of V, okay, because the process is reversible. Okay, so notice that this minus P differential of V term here is going to cancel with this plus P differential of V term there, and, and uh, they disappear. Right, so uh, your change in gives energy is simply going to be equal to differential of Q reversible plus uh, the uh, non-expansion work uh, minus T differential of S. Okay, so the expression has been greatly simplified. Okay, let's see if we can simplify this even more. Okay, notice that uh, somehow we know that the reversible uh, energy transfer as heat is connected to the uh, entropy from the thermodynamic definition of entropy. Remember that the thermodynamic definition of entropy uh, was differential of Q reversible over T. Okay, so notice that differential of Q reversible is equal to T differential of S. Okay, this is equal to T differential of S. So I have this term right here, which I can replace simply by T differential of S and these two things cancel out. Okay, so we're done. It turns out that uh, the Gibbs energy is going to be equal to the maximum amount of non-expansion work that you can extract out of a system. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, spell that out a little better. If we integrate, this is just going to be your regular change in Gibbs energy, and this is going to be reversible uh, non-expansion work. But of course, one of the key uh, properties of reversible processes is that they provide maximum work. Okay, so we can actually remove this subscript and simply use here max, saying maximum work. Okay, so uh, that is uh, uh, the relationship between Gibbs and your energy of work. If you're able to obtain the Gibbs energy of a process, and this could be a, a chemical reaction or maybe a gas expansion, whatever it is, Right, generally in, in chemistry we're interested in chemical reactions. Right? You will also be obtaining the maximum amount of non-expansion work that is, uh, uh, that is possible to, uh, to extract from that process. This has uh, uh, a lot of implications in real life. For example, consider any of the combustion chemical reactions that we use to power our world. For example, the combustion of coal or uh, natural gas and methane. What we're actually doing is we're just burning those fossil fuels and then generate electricity out of that, generating electrical, electrical work, right? So this calculation actually allows you to obtain the upper limit for the maximum efficiency of that process, right? So if you burn, say, 10 grams of methane, how much work, electrical work, you can possibly uh, obtain in the best conditions, maximum efficiency? In reality, what happens is that processes are never 100% uh, efficient, so uh, in reality you're never going to meet this maximum work that is possible to extract out of the process, but this calculation will, will give you an upper limit to determine how good your process is of extracting, say, electrical work out of a combustion chemical reaction. Okay, so, so this has uh, really important applications in real life. Alright, so let's wrap up this video. Uh, we actually have used the definition of the Gibbs energy to ob obtain a relationship between at the Gibbs energy of a process and work. And it turns out that uh, the change in Gibbs energy in a process is equal 
to the maximum amount of non-expansion work that can be extracted from that process.